Hey guys, in this video I'm going to explain the third logic game from the June 2013 LSAT, which is LSAT Prep Test 69. This is the game where a company is operating vending machines in four schools, delivering juices and snacks to each school over the course of four weeks. This game is something I would consider to be a multi-level ordering game because we have the four weeks as our base, always use the time element, the chronological element, as your base here, and then we have two different things being delivered each week. We have juices and snacks. Now the four schools themselves are our variables that we're placing onto each of the four weeks because juices happen every week, snacks happen every week, but the schools themselves are not happening every week. There are some weeks where F gets a delivery and some weeks where F does not get a delivery, for example. Now, I've laid out a bunch of rules here that I'm going to explain. We have the first rule, snacks are delivered to F at some point before they're delivered to H. So I have on the side here, SF is earlier than SH. It's occurring before. So the dash means that whatever's before the dash is occurring at some time before whatever happens after the dash. They tell us that G cannot be fourth, so I put down G is not fourth, you know, for juices, of course, under the juices space. We know that G must be the third school for snacks, so I put that right on the diagram itself here. They tell us that the first school that gets juices is the fourth school that gets snacks. So I put an arrow here between these two spaces, the J1 space and the S4 space, because those spaces will have the same variable as each other. Now, because we know that you know, S gets, you know, snacks are going to F before snacks are going to H, I put down here that snacks will never be on four. And of course, snacks will never be on four because of that rule. So therefore, we can infer that, juice, uh, ju uh, that F will never be on J1 because of the rule that J1 and S4 are the same. They get the exact same variable as each other. So that's a good little inference that we can make here. Of course, if you wanted to, you could also say that H is never on one. That's a perfectly good inference as well, not nearly as useful because it does not connect with that J1, S4 rule, but it's a nice to have sort of thing if you want to put it down. Now, this diagram right here is perfectly sufficient for you to go ahead and answer the questions. You can get all the questions right using this diagram. However, as usual, you know, I like to take things a little bit further here and see what we can do to make some multiple main diagrams based upon the information that we have. We know that, you know, this J1S4 rule combined nicely with the restriction that F cannot be on S4. We got a little you know, domino effect of inferences there. What else can we do with that? Well, we know that S4 is not getting F and S4 is also not getting G because G is already on S3. So if S4 is not getting G, that automatically means that J1 is not getting G either, since whatever happens on S4 happens on J1 and vice versa. So what's left then? We've got the four variables F, G, H, and I. If neither F nor G is going to S4 and neither F nor G is going to J1, that only leaves H and I to potentially go on each of those spaces. So we can make two different main diagrams here. One where we have H on S4 and then H on J1, and another diagram where we have I on S4 and then I on J1. So I'm going to split the game apart into those two different major possibilities, which are the only two possibilities for the game. So here are our two possibilities. We have H on J1 and S4 in the top diagram, and then I and J1 and S4 on the bottom diagram. Every valid scenario for the game will fall within one of these two major possibilities here. Now, we're not even done. We could fill in even more right now. Since you know, the bottom row has, already has two of the four variables filled in, 
let's try to fill in the other two. On the bottom diagram, of course, we inferred that H cannot be on S1, so therefore all that's left to go there is F, and then we're going to have H going on S2 as the only remaining variable that could go there. And of course that complies with our SF before SH rule, that's the whole reason H could not be on S1 in the first place. In the top diagram, though, things are a little more open-ended regarding what happens on S1 and S2. We have G and H already placed, leaving F and I to go on S1 and S2, and there's no before-after relationship between those two variables. So they're basically interchangeable. We could have either you know, F on 1 and I on 2, or I on 1 and F on 2. Doesn't really matter. Either way is perfectly fine. Now, what about the juices row? What's happening there? Well, we can fill in a little bit. Since, you know, S, you know, since J4 already cannot have G there, again, that's due to the second rule of the game, and we already have H placed on J1 in the top diagram, that leaves only either I or F to appear on J4. Nothing else could go there. On the bottom diagram here, we already have, again, you know, G can't be on J4, I is already on J1, that leaves either F or H to be on J4. And then, of course, you know, going forward, we have, you know, a few remaining empty spaces. You know, J2 and J3 are empty on both of these diagrams, but that doesn't really matter. We'll, you know, th those, th those spaces are rather ambiguous. They're a little bit more open-ended. On the top diagram, any of I, F, or G could go on J2 or J3. On the bottom diagram, any of you know, F, H, or G could go on J2 or J3. So a little bit open-ended, but we filled in a great deal here. Really going to pave the way to make the questions a lot easier. So now let's move into the questions, starting with question number 12, which is a general orientation question. We could simply take one rule at a time and apply it to all five choices, or we could use the diagrams that we've laid out here Either way is fine, doesn't really matter. I'm simply going to use the rules one at a time through all five choices just because I find it faster. You know, the diagrams that we've done here will be enormously helpful for the rest of the questions, but they may not be especially helpful for the orientation questions. So do what you like. I'm going to run through the, the rules one by one. We know that snacks have to go to F before they go to H, so on that second row, the snacks row, F must go before H. Let's scan through all five choices here looking for violations. I see that choice C has H before F in that row. That's unacceptable, so C is gone. Other choices are good on that issue. We know that G cannot be 4 on the juices level, so let's look at the juices level there. We see that B has G on 4. That's unacceptable, so B is gone. We know that G must be 3rd on the snacks level. Let's look for violations there. A is good on that. Let's see. Um, we've already eliminated B and C. G has snacks. Or, uh, choice D as in delta has G on two for snacks, not three. So D is gone for that reason. Other choices good on that issue. Let's look at the final rule. J1 and S4 must have the exact same variable. A has H on J1, S4. E has I on J1, but then has H on S4. That doesn't work, so E is gone, leaving A by elimination for number 12. Next, number 13, if H is the fourth school that gets juices. So where, where will that happen? Obviously, you know, we don't have H on, on J4, so the top diagram is going to be irrelevant here. The bottom one is what we're using. If we're going to put H on J4, that means F is not going to be there. So with H there on 4, I on J1, and then we're going to have F and G interchangeable on J2 and J3. We don't know which one goes where. So they're asking us what must be true. F on J2 could happen, but doesn't have to. F could be on J3 instead, so A is gone for that reason. Looking at B, G is the G is on J3. Must that happen? Again, it could happen, but G could go on J2 instead, so B is gone for that reason. Looking at C, F on S2, no F is specifically on S1 there, and H is on S2, so C is gone. Looking at D, H on S2, yes, that is a must for this diagram. The other diagram was irrelevant, so this one is the only one that's valid. 
So D is our answer for 13. I will look at E though, I on S1. No, we have F on S1, I's on S4 in this diagram, so E is gone leaving D. Next, number 14, if I is on J3, what could be true? So I on J3 could never happen in the bottom diagram where I is on J1, so bottom diagrams are relative, the top one's the only one that we're gonna use. So I on J3, we're gonna put I down right there, that forces F to be on J4, since I is not gonna be on J4 there, so G is gonna have to go in the remaining empty space on J2, so we have H, G, I, F, on that top row. And they're asking us what could be true. Juice on, no, ju juices go to G before they go to H. G before H on the top row, that is not happening. We have H before G there, so A is gone. Looking at B, we have juices on I before H. So again, H is on J1, this is not happening. Looking at C, F before I on the S row. Could that happen? Absolutely. I and F are interchangeable there. We could have F before I or I before F. Either way is possible. So C could be the case and is our answer. I'll go through the others though. On the snack level, G before I. That's impossible. G is on three and I must go on either one or two. So D is gone. Looking at E, on the snack level, H before G. No, we specifically have G before H here. So E is gone, leaving C for 14. Next, number 15, if I is the first school on the snack level. Bottom diagrams are relevant since it has F as the F on snack on snack one here. We need I on snack one, so we're gonna have to force F specifically onto S2 here. So we have I, F, G, H on the bottom level for snacks. They're asking us what could be the case. F on J2. Yeah, that could totally happen. We could have F on J2 and then have I on J4, G on J3. That would work perfectly fine, so A is our answer for 15. I'll take a quick look at the others though. H on J2, no, H is on J1, so B is gone. Looking at C, H on J3, no, again, H is on J1. Looking at D, I on J1, no, H is there. Looking at E, H on S2, no, F is there. H is on S4 in this diagram, so E is gone, leaving A. For number 16, we, have, we finally have a general could be true question. So both diagrams here, both of our main diagrams will apply. We'll have to look across both of them. For A, both J and S go to G before they go to F. So do we, could we ever have both Gs occurring before both Fs in both rows? No, that is impossible. In both of our diagrams, we see that, you know, of course, G has to go on S3 and F will go on either one or two in the top diagram for S. In the bottom diagram, F has to go on one speci S1 specifically. So either way, we're always gonna have F before G, at least with regard to snacks. So A is out. Looking at B, G both Gs before both Is. Well, in the bottom diagram, you know we have G before I. So that could apply for snacks. But then if you look at juices, we have I on one. So that's never happening on the bottom diagram. On the top diagram, we have I on either S1 or S2 and then G on S3. So not happening for G and I in either case, neither main diagram, so B is gone. Looking at C, both H's before both I's. Well, we have I before H definitely happening in the top diagram with regard to snacks, so the top diagram would never allow that to happen. In the bottom diagram, we have I on J1. So, at least with regard to juices, I is always gonna go before H on that, in that possibility for juices. So, it's never happening in either diagram, so C is impossible. Looking at D, both I's before both F's. Could that happen? In the bottom diagram, we have S1, F, before S4I. So F before I on the snacks level, it could never happen here. But in the top diagram, we could have I on S1, F on S2, and then on juices, we could have F on J4, and then I go on either J2 or J3 interchangeable with G. 
So this could actually work on the top diagram. So D is possible. It is a could. So it is our answer for number 16, D. I will take a quick look at E, though. Both I's before both H's. In the bottom diagram, we have H on S2, then I on S4, so it could never work there. In the top diagram, with I before H, S, you know, the S level looks okay for that. It would work there, but on the top level for juices, H on J1 completely ruins that. So for that reason, we could never have it work for choice E there. I before, both I's before, both H's would never happen. Finally, number 17, we have a rule substitution question here about the second rule of the game, which told us that G cannot go on J4. So we're looking for what answer choice, if substituted for this rule, would have an identical effect, would have the same consequences regarding where the variables are placed on the diagram here. Now, we already learned that G could not go on J1 because of the J1S4 rule. G could not go on S4 because G was already on S3 due to the third rule of the game. So everything is very related here if you look at the second, third, and fourth rules of the game here regarding how they affect G. So basically, G not being on 4 limited us to having G on either J2 or J3 since we already knew that G could not be on J1. So choice B here basically does that. Again, because of J, the J1S4 rule, G never goes on J1 no matter what. So not G4 simply limits G to J2 or J3. B is imposing the same restriction, giving us the same result. So you want to be looking for how G is affected. So B is our answer for number 17. It limits things no more than the original rule did, as well as no less than the original rule did. If you think about you know, all the diagrams that we've been dealing with as we've been working through the questions previously, these two main diagrams right here, you'll see that G was always limited to J2 or J3 all along.